This is my response to the movie Unplanned. Hey guys, Laura here from What Laura Likes. Now, I have to say, I am a bit down today, a bit sad. I didn't sleep well. Last night, thankfully, one of the Catholic churches here in town was able to host a premiere viewing of the movie Unplanned. I didn't even realize that this movie probably isn't coming to my town because it's too small. I think it's only opening in major cities, but I will double check that and put a link down to where you can find the closest theater for you um, down in the description. But yeah, uh, so I went to this movie. Now, just something about me, I have a bit of a photographic memory and because of that, I don't tend to expose myself to anything that is going to be disturbing because it stays with me. I remember one time someone sent me one of those Halloween videos where someone's like bicycling around in an amusement park and then all of a sudden the exorcist pops up, like the, the child from the exorcism, the exorcist pops up. That image stayed with me. And like the, pe the person who sent it to me didn't understand that like this is how my brain processes. Most people can just laugh this stuff off, but it stays with me. I haven't watched The Passion of the Christ. Oh, I need to put my miraculous medal on. I haven't watched The Passion of the Christ because I just know that the graphicness of it is going to stay with me. I'm gonna probably try to watch it this Lent um, during Holy Week, but I don't know, it'll be at home. Anyway, so I knew I was taking myself, like risking something going to this movie, but I really wanted to be able to see it both for myself, but more so for you guys. Like, whether you are pro-choice or pro-life, I wanted to make this video for you to give you my reaction. Now, as someone who's always been pro-life, I have never needed to see pictures of body, you know, babies with their body parts dismembered. I've never needed to see the equipment they use. But being after having seen this movie, I just am at a very much like a very different place in terms of being pro-life because not only does one person die for every abortion but the women who are pressured into having abortions by Planned Parenthood the women that are sold abortions that are given deals if they sign up today to receive their abortion these young girls that are given you know plan B pill or whatever it's called and hemorrhaging for 12 hours I mean it's it's I have no idea how that birth control, you know, re resource or birth abortion resource ever passed the FDA because um, I'll talk about it in a minute. But the scene where she goes through that is heart wrenching, and it seems like she's going to die. So, um, and then another person almost does die, and that happens all the time, not just in this one incident that Abby witnessed. So. Let me back up a minute and just say that, so this story unplanned, if you don't know, is about one of the Planned Parenthood directors who, whose eyes were opened and is now a very staunch pro-lifer and she's trying to actually help other women get out of being stuck in Planned Parenthood because of the way Planned Parenthood handles it if you want to leave the company. So. Just really fast, she went to college. Planned Parenthood was at one of those fairs. I, don't, I, I remember Planned Parenthood being at the fair. They handed me like a nail file and a pamphlet about birth control and things like that. Um, but so Abby starts volunteering, and then she moves into working there, like a kind of in the office or something. And then she quickly becomes a counselor. But she's literally counseling women to have abortions, like not giving them options on adoption or, you know, if they have family support or whatever it is, like just really telling them it'll be okay. You know, even if they're scared, even if they're unsure, she tells people like, oh, you know, you're always gonna be a little unsure. She herself goes through two abortions. It's very sad, but you can tell she kind of hardens her heart to do this work. And then she ultimately becomes the youngest director of Planned Parenthood and the moment that changes it, everything for her was like this one moment. So, um, even though there was a bit of build up to it. So, before I go any further into this video, I'm already at five minutes in. 
Um, before I go any further into this video, I do want to say that it is rated R for a reason. There are three scenes in particular that I, being like really sensitive myself, couldn't watch. Like, and I literally, I get really, really nauseous when I know there's like extreme violence or that, like just evilness being portrayed on a screen. And I was very nauseous during the scenes. And I looked down and, um, I just, um, want to warn parents if you are thinking about taking your child um, I know that in most states 16 year olds can get abortions I would say that's probably the youngest age I would take a child is like 16 or a very 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 mature 15 year old but just know that there are moments that are going to if your child's sensitive are going to stay in their brain for a very long time and so you know just you know your child but I think that I know that in the comments before I've said I don't know why it's rated R now I do um, it's very intense and yes children can receive abortions or the morning after pill and that is horrendous and should not be legal at all um, watching these young young girls on this show interacting with Planned Parenthood is so sad now I did read statistics that say um, between 20 and 30 are when the majority of people have abortions so um, I pray that everybody at that age goes see them. I hope college students go see this movie. Um, but anyway, so I do want to say that I would not take Chloe until she was at least 16, and she would have to be a very mature 16-year-old. Um, and I would probably warn her about these three scenes. So I'm going to now do a little bit of a spoiler. So if you don't want to know anything that happens in the movie, don't watch this part. Skip ahead. I'll have timestamps down below that tell you when I'm done with this part. But I want to talk about the three scenes that I hid my face from um, and because I think they're really important to talk about in my buyers with die. So the first one was the beginning of the movie. It opens with a scene that changes everything. She's asked to assist with an abortion. She's never been asked to do that in her eight years at Planned Parenthood. She's now the director of this of this unit here and in Houston. And um, she holds an ultrasound wand and is watching an ultrasound screen while the doctor is going in with a catheter she just had no idea and the baby is fighting for his life like kicking the catheter away i couldn't watch i couldn't watch um the doctor was so callous and just evil but um i couldn't watch and so my husband said that literally pieces of the baby are sucked from the baby itself and then sucked through the tube so like a little arm would be sucked off the baby's body, you know, ripped off and then put through the tube. And um, the mother was awake and like kind of crying because the baby was so little, I guess they could do it while I was awake. I don't know. I don't know the age of the baby. Um, and then the scene that really rips your heart out. I mean, that's worse. That's violent and terrible up to then. But then you look, and I did see this, and the uterus is empty. It's just this black hole. And there was just a life in there, a life fighting to live at like eight weeks old, at like, I don't, you know, very, very young. And here she was fighting because we are all humans, like from the very moment of conception. And we will fight to survive as part of what, how God made us. And so that scene was very, very intense, very intense. And Abby runs out of the room and cries and she leaves Planned Parenthood. She goes straight to the Coalition for Life down the street that's been trying to work with Honor for eight years and says, I left, I need help. And, and it's this really beautiful, amazing turning point in her life, but it's so intense. That scene is so intense. It's right in the beginning. So then Abby does, it goes back in time and Abby, um, you see her go through her first abortion and she talks about you know the drugs they give you and how you just feel afterwards and there are all these girls lined up in a row just kind of hunched over you know recovering and they give you like a cracker um, there's talk about health care goodness gracious the second part that was really graphic always for me really intense is she has to she decides to have a second abortion she's early enough she just finds out and she's working and she's volunteering or working at Planned Parenthood at this point and so she does the pill and she's told it'll just be a gentle washing of your uterus you may have a little bit of cramping so she takes the first pill and then there's like four more pills you're supposed to take or something and um she goes to sleep and wakes up in this horrible pain and it is the most intense 
I'm getting, I'm getting nauseous thinking about it. Scene where her uterus is just hemorrhaging and emptying and cramping. And later she says that the cramping lasted for 12 hours, like the intense like agony of it. And then she literally was releasing blood clots for eight weeks after. I have absolutely no idea how this drug passed the FDA. These are, and little girls, little 16 year olds are given this drug, you know, this is like standard procedure. Like I remember even when I was younger thinking, well gosh, if I'm ever raped, I'll just take the morning after pill because it'll just wash out my uterus and then that way the baby won't be able to like attach. This is, you know, and this is, I've always been pro-life, but you know, it's easy to kind of get your brain washed in certain ways, right? So it's, it was tragic and sad. Then she called up her friend at the clinic and was like, what the hell? Sorry, my language. But like, what in the world? You told me this was gentle. And she goes, I'm sorry, I have a patient. I can't help you. Like there was just no follow up. There was no feelings. And you would think that she would have left Planned Parenthood. There's always moments where you think she would leave. And instead she stays and like is just mad at herself for putting herself through that, but not mad at Planned Parenthood. If anything, she still believes in Planned Parenthood's cause. The third scene is this little girl, this dad comes in with this little girl, she's probably like 16, and she looks very frail and and doesn't want to have the abortion and her dad is like pushing it on her. And Abby's like, it's okay, I'll stay with you, it's okay, it's, it's the right thing to have it happen, you don't want to have a kid, baby in high school. You know, she's doing her whole shtick that she does. So she has the abortion procedure, she's in the waiting room with all the other girls and there's blood dripping everywhere. And so they rush her back in. And so you see this really intense scene. There's like workers saying, I wasn't hired for this because they always thought they were just gonna be in the clean, safe front room. They weren't gonna have to see in the messiness. Um, there's the fact is that to um, Abby's like, we need to call an ambulance. And the director, who's like this very evil person, like just talk about the devil, like incarnate, like totally has sold her soul. Uh, she, um, it says you can't call the hospital, that's what they want. They'll have pictures of an ambulance arriving at Planned Parenthood. And so literally this girl almost dies. They do save her life, but it takes, um, I think about three hours, which should be like, you know, the dad was told me like a 15, 20 minute procedure. And then Abby goes out and lies to him about um, what's going on with his daughter so that he never knows and she won't know. The director's like, it's okay, she's been drugged. She, we give her a lot of drugs. They don't know what happened to them. You know, they're just tired. They have no idea they almost died. Um, it's so alarming. And oh, and they also said she needed a blood transfusion because she lost so much blood. And the doctor's like, we just had plasma to start her on plasma, but we don't have, a, we don't have blood here. Again, why that law should have, the Born Alive Protection Act should have been passed because one of the requirements was that you called a hospital if the baby lived. I know, this is a tangent, you guys, but for people to think that Planned Parenthood is gonna do the right thing and the doctors that work for Planned Parenthood are gonna do the right thing is ludicrous and naive. And so to think that the doctor's gonna call a hospital if a girl almost dies, and definitely to think that if a doctor's gonna call a hospital if, a, if an abortion is botched, I mean, talk about they talk later a little bit about how a 24 week old baby is killed and it's disgusting and murder. Like there's no other way to put it. 24 plus weeks, that baby's surviving in a NICU most likely and oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Anyway, those are the three scenes that are really, really intense. So just know that as a mom or as a person who's gonna go, that those three scenes are going to be a bit intense if you wanna take your child that's younger, um, or if you yourself are sensitive, I'm not saying don't go, but just know that, I'm, like, I'm literally still nauseous today from it because it's so sad and like every, I think it's like there's two abortions a minute in the United States. I mean, it's just, and, and the thing that really gets me is that the women, the mothers, are the ones that are being so hurt by this. And you know, people always say women's rights to choose, women's right to choose. It's like no one should be able to choose that because it wrecks their lives and they have to go to a place of such hardness and callousness and you won't ever leave an abortion facility and not be a changed person. And 
the movie does such an excellent job of of really portraying that so there is a lot of hope in the movie. I have to say, I prayed the Mirari while I was there. I prayed the Hail Mary while I was there as much as I could because I was really distracted by the sounds. So I really do. I encourage everybody to go see it. Um, I think that if you go see it, though, please don't stay silent. I mean, that's the thing. We really need to be loud about this. I'm going to be making more pro-life videos on this channel from now on. I'm going to be praying the Mary every day the memory at least once a day like this is such evil it's there's no other way to put it the devil is just laughing every time a woman's life is ruined a child's life is ruined but the way that Planned Parenthood is portrayed if even a percentage is true that pro like nonprofit give me a break government supported company is needs to be completely annihilated and so i am so thankful for abby johnson and her ministry and then there were none i'm going to put links down below for all the resources i talked about i pray that i can get past this a little bit today and move forward i just encourage all of you to see it if you are pro-choice and you've gotten to this point in the video i really challenge you to go see it because i can't see how anyone can see that movie and stay and if you are thinking well gosh that i'm not gonna go see it because i want to stay pro-choice you really need to do some soul searching because there that is not a choice that should ever be a choice okay it's just it's not it's just completely harmful and ryan wants to get on this weekend and film his response to it and have kind of man-to-man -man talk with the men who take their daughters, take their girlfriends, their, you know, I don't know, maybe wives, whoever. The men that support this need to be taken to task as well. So I will put as many resources down below. Like I usually do my pro-life videos. Please let me know your comments. If you've seen the movie, please share what your thoughts are. And you guys, just as much as, as disturbing as this is, let us pray. Don't ever, ever think that prayer doesn't matter. And we have to pray for these women, these children and these women, that that they will, their hearts will be softened, that, oh my gosh, that doctors stop performing these abominations. And just that as a culture, we start really realizing the complete evil that has taken over a huge segment of our country. In, in allowing this and making this something that's illegal on the books in America and in other in so many other countries in the world. So God bless. Let me know your comments down below. Subscribe if you're new here. If you feel the same way I do, make sure you like this video. All right, guys. Until next time, God bless and have a beautiful day and stay in memory. I'll put the prayer down below.